Hello and welcome to the Coaching Crowd podcast with me, Jay Wheatley, and my friend and co-host Zoe Hawkins. Hi, everybody. Good to be here again. And today we're talking about what makes a good coach. And we wanted to bring this episode to share our thoughts and reflections on what makes a good coach. And we know that many people be listening thinking, well, am I a good coach? <laughs> and the reason why is because when you're in a coaching session, it's just you and your client. It's very hard to know, like, did I did I do a good job then? Did I not? Because your clients often just pour appreciation and love onto you as their coach. So we thought this would be helpful for people to reflect through a different lens on what makes a good coach. I think it's also relevant for those of you listening that are thinking about training to be a coach and wondering, have I got what it takes? Do I have those natural competencies? You know, how how do I know if it's a pathway for me? So hopefully as we go through and talk about what it takes to be a, a great coach, you'll be able to kind of align your own self-assessment against that. Um, of course, you know, our training programs and coaching training programs are designed to support you to develop, you know, all of the skills that you need. Um, but I think the starting point, which is kind of the most simplistic answer is, the client decides if you're a great coach or not. You know, that that is the heart of it. The, the other part of it is, you know, there are coaching bodies with core coaching competency frameworks and ethical frameworks too. And so you have a responsibility to um, work ethically in accordance with the ethical framework and, and honor those competency frameworks. So if you're doing those things and your coach is happy, you're a great coach. Yeah, I think the danger of um, relying on those things is that one, your clients don't know how it could have been, you know, so the client can have an amazing experience and they can say you're a great coach and you might have been bordering mentoring them throughout because clients will still find mentoring useful. So I think your client deciding, yes, absolutely, is a great litmus test. And be aware, not just to use that. So if you're planning on becoming a coach or you're coaching your clients saying, yeah, you're great, you're great, you're great. Um, that's not your only dimension. And so then you could bring the competencies in and layer on because what your competencies then do is say, so your, your clients are saying you're great. And then you can look to the competencies and think, well, how could I be even better? Because it's true. If your clients say you're great, you are and how can you be even better? And then I think the third piece that makes a great coach is your depth of ability in reflecting on your practice. So you can go into a client session, your client can say, that was amazing. Like loads of light bulb moments. I've got loads of actions I can take away. It's so brilliant. Thanks so much. And you can look to the competencies and you, your competencies can say, you ticked all these boxes, but then what about you? So what do you think and feel about that session? What went well? What didn't go so well? What were your thoughts, feelings, and sensations in that session? What were perhaps the missed opportunities? Or what were the decisions that you made that maybe your client could have made? You know, So being able to interrogate and think about and reflect upon the work you've just done with your client enables you to become an even better coach because you're constantly learning from your experience. Oh, there's a few different things that that sparked off in me. One is, um, what about those sessions where it feels flat? So I get coaches coming to coaching supervision and, you know, you can choose whatever sessions and things, but they tend to bring ones that are most, you know, worrying them or they've got this doubt uh, that's been seeded in their mind did I do a good job or not and I'll say you know we had two great sessions and then felt like session three just felt a bit flat and what should I have done you know the should as if there's one version of it and I think coaching is a creative endeavor it's an art you know a good is a good coach in session three with client a the same thing as a good coach is in session five with client c Maybe not. Um, so if the client, you know, sometimes if when people ask for feedback, the clients will say, yeah, like, yeah, it was, you know, it was interesting that we talked about, you know, X and then the client, the coach is thinking, oh, I don't know. I, they didn't like the feedback that the client gave. And so does, does that mean 
that they're not a good coach. No, I, I don't think it does mean that. I think, you know, the, the coach and the client are growing, are both growing through the relationship and the experiences that they have. And a good coach is somebody that reflects and is committed to their continuous professional development. Um, they're also, I think, things like they're able to create space in the conversation. So um, their ego is as much as possible left at the door. <laughs> um, and to some extent, everything they ever know maybe is left is left at the door. Um, but you work with different clients in, in different ways. I think a good coach is somebody that can connect quickly and create a safe psychological space quickly uh, with and for the client. Mm. I think what you're talking to there and the way that I interpret this in my practice is, are you ready with the next question before your clients finished speaking? And, and this is without judgment because every single coach will do that like in their early days where they're learning and practicing, there's like almost this hunger to be ready with the next question, you know, to give your clients something valuable before they, uh, before they start speaking. And I think when you are at the point where you're silent without the next question, your client is silent in their reflections and you almost wait for the next question or next direction to emerge I think that's when you're doing some great coaching because you're very much in the present moment. And with that, you are simultaneously holding patterns, themes, language that the clients used and almost sitting with, is this a re is this relevant now? And almost waiting for a sign of like, yeah, I think now's the time that might be useful for me to share that with my clients. So I think that pause, that silence, you know, is great coaching. And I think sometimes you feel like you've got to fill the silence and you've got to be constantly moving forward. But I think it's great when you have the confidence and the courage as a coach to sit in silence with your client and almost just let's see what emerges next. I think that's great coaching. Mm, I think there's a lot of talk in coaching about being non-directive but I think the flavor of what you're touching upon there is like being non-attached as well, like not being a, yes, the client is sharing with you the goal that they want to work on. Yes. You, you know, you, you want them to achieve it because they want to achieve it, not because it feels good to you that your client, you know, achieves it, which it, it I'm sure it, you know, it, it, it does in that case, but not having the attachment to needing the client to experience value in every single second of every single session like for you to feel good so it's making sure that, that it is for the client and sometimes clients need to have you know they benefit from having the realizations you know where you're not working too hard is the client working harder than you um in the sense of as you said, like you're almost experiencing what they're saying in the sense of you're processing it and reflecting on it based on everything they've shared with you before, the things they've said, the things they haven't said, the verbal communication and the nonverbal communication. You're kind of calibrating all of that and holding that umbrella goal that they've got and then res and then responding um, to that. So, and it doesn't, to some extent, like if you're coming from that and it may not be the golden question, you know, but actually it's a question that enables them to kind of do that internal search, you know, a bit more, get some new insight, think about something in a new way. Mm. Um, but they're the I, ones doing the work. I think there's also a piece like what makes a good coach. Like, well, that depends what the client needs, you know? So like, I think you're a great coach. I think I'm a great coach and I've seen many of other coaches coach in a totally different style to you and to, and to, and to me, and they're great. Mm -hmm. So we aren't doing the same things. We aren't coaching in the same way. We're probably not even bringing to some extent the same skills and approaches, but they're great coaches for the clients that they work with. So bear that in mind as you listen to this podcast, oh my God, I don't do those things <laughs> or like, oh, I do this instead. Okay. Is it working? Is it working for you? 
Is it working for your client? Are you um, moving forward and growing and developing in the style that you have? Good, you know, great. And and I think that's the that's probably leading me to think about another thing. What makes a good coach is somebody who is really confident and clear and stands strong in their identity of who they are as a coach. Because when you have that as a coach, it gives your clients confidence of like, yes, that's the coach for me. I'm very clear on how they work. I'm very clear about who they are, the style that they bring. You're the coach I want to work with. Um, so I think there's something around yeah, who you are as a coach and being clear and strong about that. Yeah, I think for me, a good coach is somebody that enters into coaching conversations with a learner mindset. Um, and also is somebody that does their own self-work in, in whatever that looks like for them, whether that is working with a coach or coaches themselves, whether they do it through reading, journaling, you know, wh whatever it is, but, but sees themselves as, you know, they're not they're sort of they're not complete in you know they're constantly evolving they're all but they are in a healthy place themselves you know they're healthy and stable and, and they're coaching from that place um and they have an awareness of the you know the pitfalls of over identifying with the client or rescuing the client and so on they have an awareness of that and i think it's when you're able you have the discipline so you've learned the discipline of being like completely non-directive and you've got a whole range of tools or activities that you could draw that you can draw from and having all of that enables you to be fully present so you don't have to do any of those things but you're influenced by that and then you can tailor the way that you meet your client and what you how you are with them the questions you ask and so on from all of that knowledge not necessarily using any one individual piece um and that that for me is the is the sort of artistry bit of it i also think what makes a good coach we can also bring it back to some really clear basics like what makes a good coach is that your client does more talking than you like you know, fundamentally, you need to be in the background and your client needs to be in the foreground. It's your client's space. They should be making the decisions around where the where the client um, wants to take the the coaching. You know, their their center stage. You know, your your support staff behind. So that I think is really clear. Like, who's doing the most of the talking? And it's your client needs to be doing most of the talking to get the value from the session that you are there to serve. Mm. Almost kind of like the less is more. And the, the flip side of that is I know coaches come to coaching supervision and we did a podcast recently on like, if you've got a client that will talk kind of uninterrupted for, you know, 80, 90% of the session, can it be a, can you be a good coach if you interrupt that and i would say yes you can if you've got that contract with them and it's in service of the goal and that you know they want you to do that and 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 then yes it, that can be being a great coach in that particular situation um and i yeah. guess the summary of that one is like a good coach is a coach that meets their clients needs yeah you know so if your client is saying oh, i just need i just need to talk just need to get this off my chest. I've got so many thoughts swimming around in my head. I just need some space to unload it. And you interrupt, probably not great. But if the coach, if the coachee is saying, um, actually, I have all these thoughts. Uh, sometimes I go off down rabbit holes. I really need someone who can keep me focused. Um, then you interrupt. Great coaching. <laughs> the context I guess is what we're saying here. Context is really important for deciding what makes a great coach. Yeah, it's certainly not one dimensional. It, you know, it's it's multifaceted. Um, so as you were saying, you know, you're going to learn the basics of what it is to be a great coach, which is contracting actually is a really critical to be a great coach uh, so that your client has you know, they, they understand the expectations of them and of you and you know what it is that you're working on. And that is 
in the sessions you honor that and you and you work towards that um I think being a great coach is it's about connection actually I think being a great coach like how do how do you connect with your client um how do you enable them to see themselves fully and whole and as resourced um, and there are different different skills you can do you can use for that. Listening obviously is critical. We we listen in a, maybe a different way in coaching than we do than we listen generally, like outside, as you were saying earlier. So we don't listen to respond. We're listening to ignite, um, and we're listening to help to help the clients often hear themselves properly for the first time or hear the impact of the stories that they you know, the way they're articulating their experiences. Um, yeah, I think one final thing I would say around what makes a good coach is not seeking perfection. Mm. You know, as a coach, it's very easy to want every single session to go perfectly. It's just not real. It doesn't happen. And it doesn't happen for a variety of reasons. It could be about the energy the client's bringing that day, the energy you're bringing that day. Um, you know, just any anything can can come up in a coaching session. You simply may not make full contact in the session around oh, I'm not I'm just not sure how to help this client I remember reflect on a session I had a client who bought something and when they bought it I was like I'm stuck I like was I was stuck with that and so that session I would if I was measuring my value as a coach and my skill as a coach on that session I would say that was not great coaching client found it useful but by my standards I was like that wasn't great coaching and that's okay it's okay if one session doesn't go well, because what I do with that is all the other things that make me a great coach, which is to lean into it and say, what happened there? Get curious. And what I was able to unravel was there was some transference going on there. Um, and I was then able to use that to help the client to become unstuck. The next coaching session we had was brilliant. <laughs> it was amazing, like surprised myself. If I measured myself on that session, I'd been really happy with it. So you've got to be able to go on a journey with your clients and accept that some sessions will be amazing and some sessions will be reasonable. There will be times when some sessions just won't go so well. But if you use what makes you a great coach to work with those sessions, you'll learn even more and become even better. So yeah, a learner's mindset is really important. Don't go out there seeking to be perfect. And also, I think the final bit I'd like to share is I think what makes a great coach is somebody that is able to access their own emotions and can support their clients to connect with their emotions too. So to help them process not only their thoughts, you know, their thinking, but also their feelings, their emotions, um, and align that with their behavior. And intuition is very much related to this you know those people individuals that struggle to kind of relate to their intuition is often an emotional blocker getting in the way of that but being able to use your intuition and support your clients around that topic as well is a really important skill for a coach to have and I think this whole integration between thinking feeling and doing is also about great coaches use their whole body as a coaching tool they notice the sensations that they experience in the session so they enter the sessions clean for want of a better word you know they've done the prep so that they can be fully present in that bubble with their client you know to the best of their ability and so when they experience sensations in the conversation they are checking is this mine you know is this is this like a hangover from stuff outside of here or is is this occurring purely in response to what my client is saying or am I maybe even sensing something that the client is sensing and they have the confidence to be able to use what's happening in the here and now relationship and offer that as information to the client to accept or reject or get curious about in relation to their goal rather than just being in the conversation having the conversation and ignoring all of the data and information that is available um, through the relationship. Um, and that, you know, that's that's where coaches can add added value to their clients through drawing on that. Absolutely. So if you are thinking about training to be a coach and you're listening to this and thinking, oh, gosh, I would, I, I don't know if I could ever coach in that way. You, you've got to be able to take the first step. And just keep stepping. And the first step for many will be finding out which coaching course is right for them. So you can head over to our quiz at mycoachingcourse.com 
And if you're a coach and you've been listening to this and you feel inspired to do some CPD to continue to dig into your skills and be the best coach that you can be, then come and check out our CPD courses, which is group and team coaching and also emotions coaching. You can find those on our website at igcompany.co.uk.